Apple finally introduced us to all the different AI tools that they've been working on, and there's quite a bit of them, over 25 different AI updates that they announced in the developer conference they just finished up. And one of the biggest updates they announced is a native integration of ChatGPT into Apple products. So your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac operating system, they all are going to now have ChatGPT powered by ChatGPT 4.0 completely for free and that's just one of the 25 updates that i'll cover quickly in this video at the very top they introduced us to apple intelligence now this is separate from chat gpt integration this is an ai model they've been working on and it's basically a two-sided ai model it's a large language model which is going to help us with text creation inside of all kinds of different mac products and they also introduced us to a diffusion model those are the models that could generate images from a text prompt and they build those into a ton of different apps and workflows now the real power of apple intelligence between the large language model and the image creation model is it has all the context from all your devices so if you have your mac devices from your iphone to your mac it could basically pull things in so if you want to generate an image that looks like a specific person, well, he knows what that person looks like from that person being tagged in your photo library. So it could create an emoji, for example, that looks just like that person. It's one of the updates coming up here. Now, the next big update is something called actions, specifically cross app actions. Your iPhone now could take actions for you inside of different apps. So one of the examples they gave is play a podcast that my wife sent me. So what it could do, it could look inside of your messages it knows the context and it knows who your wife is. Pull up the message she sent you the other day related to a podcast and then open the podcast app and automatically play that for you. Now, the next update is personalized context, which they kept referring to this as a personalized AI, because if you own an iPhone, for example, it has a lot of stuff about you that is personalized to you, right? Your photo library, it knows all the different people you know. It knows all the messages that you've sent and received. It knows things if you use the mail app, it knows things inside of your emails. So it could pull all that in to give you personalized context. Here's a little preview of what they showed. Suppose one of my meetings is being rescheduled for late in the afternoon, and I'm wondering if it's going to prevent me from getting to my daughter's play performance on time. Apple Intelligence can process the relevant personal data to assist me. It can understand who my daughter is, the play details she sent several days ago, the time and location for my meeting, and predicted traffic between my office and the theater. Now they completely changed how privacy in AI works with this new update. So they have something called on-device intelligence, meaning a lot of the actions you take using the Apple intelligence actually takes place on your device. The information doesn't go anywhere. But in some cases, it's not gonna be able to do that on device. The devices are still not powerful enough to do every AI task. It takes a lot of computing power to do that. So they created a whole new thing called private cloud computes. So if he can't do an action or any of the tasks that he can do, and we have a bunch more coming up, what it does is it tries to do it on device using the power of the device. And when he can't do that, he sends it to the private cloud computes. And they basically describe this whole new set of Apple Silicon servers designed specifically for this purpose, for this private cloud compute. So this is really interesting. Before everyone thought it has to have enough power to do AI tasks using the device to stay private, but now they've created private compute in this private cloud compute that could take care of much more complex tasks. Now, the next update is a complete overhaul of Siri. If you have an iPhone or if you have a Mac, you know that Siri is not that usable, but now it actually has natural language built into it and it could do a whole lot more. So the cool thing about it too, is if you don't wanna speak out loud to Siri, you could actually type to Siri too. So you could have conversations that don't require you to have a back and forth conversation, type in what you want, and then you could switch between text and voice. Now, as part of this update, Siri also has on-screen awareness. So it could see what's on your screen and then the content that is needed and pull that into the conversation. Here's a quick preview of what Siri could do. For example, say a friend texts you his new address. Right from the messages thread, you can say, add this address to his contact card and Siri will take care of it. So next was something called Siri Actions. So you could take actions too inside of your different apps. So you basically could ask Siri to pull up a photo that you wanna improve and then ask it to make it pop. And that's the example they showed. And it just made those changes. And then he asked to now take the revised photo 
add it to a notes app and add that person's bio underneath. And just in seconds, it did all of that just using those actions. And they introduced a whole new framework called app intent. So basically with this framework is third party apps when developers are building these, they could define these set of actions so Siri could take advantage of those using Apple intelligence. So this is gonna open up so many different options inside of apps that now could be completely integrated. So as soon as this really rolls out to all the different apps that you use, you pretty much wouldn't really have to open different apps to take action. Siri will take care of all that for you, which puts a lot of these AI devices that were focused on that out of business. And this update is not just coming to the iPhone, it's gonna be integrated into iPads and to Macs, and they're all gonna seamlessly talk to each other too. So that was something they showed earlier before they got into AI, that the cross collaboration easily between all the different devices. If you're like me, you have all three of those devices. So being able to jump back and forth between the different application and not having Siri built into all of them could be completely a game changer for productivity. Now they also introduce system-wide writing tools. So all the apps on your Mac that you use to write things with, like your notes app or your email app or your pages, they now have writing capabilities like rewriting text, changing the tone, summarizing text, proofreading text. Now, one of my favorite things is this new option called smart replies inside of your email. I use the mail app on my Mac, on my iPhone, on my iPad, and this one just basically offers you smart replies to an email very quickly. So you pull up an email, it gives you the smart reply, you decide to choose to use it or not, or reply on your own. But automatically creating these replies, this could be a huge time saver. Most of us probably spend a good amount of our time just replying to emails that could be done much, much faster with AI. Now, the next big update with emails was email summaries right on your inbox. So when you open your inbox, you got a bunch of email. Now the first couple of lines are a summary of that email. So you don't actually have to open the email if you don't need to really read it, right? It's gonna summarize it for you right there. And if the email is long, you could open up the email, tap for a summary, and it's gonna give you a summary right on top of that email. This, just these couple of email things are gonna be a huge time saver. And the next email update was about notification management of emails. So it's gonna go through your inbox. Again, a lot of this happens on device or on that private server. So those privacy options are just fantastic because this is otherwise something I wouldn't wanna use. But basically what notification management inside of emails does is summarizes based on priority, what's important and pulls those to the top of your inbox. So you reply to those, something again, based on the context, everything it knows about you across apps, not just the mail app. And then it could reduce any kind of extra emails that you don't need to even look at right now. And they introduce a brand new notification tool where basically now, if you are in that mode, it's gonna know when a notification comes in. Should it show you that notification? Is it urgent? Well, it has that large language model, right? It could understand text. So based on that, it's gonna tell you if something is urgent and you need to open it up and it's gonna interrupt you. Or if you're in that focus mode and it's not ur urgent and you could get back to it later, it's not gonna notify you. Now they had some new updates inside of the message app. One of them is this whole new thing called Genmoji. So you could create AI generated emojis based on a description. And again, because it has all the context, you could basically create an emoji or Genmoji based on someone in your photo library, a very customized reply to someone using something that you created with a text prompt, but using their photos from your photos app. And it has three different styles that it could create this in. Now, the next update is all about the diffusion model. So the large language model takes care of all the text, but the diffusion model they have, they introduce something called image playground where you could generate images. It's a whole image creation platform that takes place on device. This one doesn't go anywhere and it's unlimited. This is wild. So you could create as many images as you want with these and it integrates with some of the apps you use more frequently to generate things like notes and pages and keynotes and numbers and things like that. Those are the native apps that come with Mac for writing and things like that or slideshow creation. And they also introduce a brand new app called Image Playground app. This is a dedicated standalone app for creating images that's gonna be rolling out to your Mac. Now they also introduced a new tool called Image Wand in the Notes app. So the Notes app got ton of new updates, but this one basically you could sketch something, highlight it inside of the Notes app, and it'll then use that image playground to turn it into an actual image. 
Now they also introduced a new tool called the cleanup tool for your photos. So now you just tap that and it just goes, analyzes the photo and cleans it up, like removing people in the background that you don't want in that photo. Now, another big update is the search bar in the photos app is far more useful now because now you could use natural language to ask to get something that is inside of your photos app, or it could even find things inside of a video. So if there is something in the middle of a video clip, it could actually use vision to see what's in that video and just show you that portion of the video. And based on that, they also released something called memory movies. So you could create a movie with a storyline just using a simple text prompt. And this will utilize all your photos and videos from your photo library to create a very specific storyline based on the prompt. And it will use things from Apple Music to put some background music behind it too. Now, the next update is inside of the Notes app. One of my favorites, you could now basically leave yourself audio voice messages. It will then take that audio recording and transcribe it automatically. And then on top of that, give you an AI summary of your own transcription. Now, the biggest update of them all, they kept to the very end, which is the ChatGPT native integration inside of all the different Mac devices from your iPhone to your iPad to the Mac. Now you have ChatGPT built in. So everything with Apple intelligence was all about the context and the personalized AI based on everything you have. But when you're talking to the outside world, that's where ChatGPT comes in. So if you want to do any kind of searches or look up anything, the power of ChatGPT is now native to all Apple devices. And ChatGPT is now built into Siri. So Siri already became much more powerful with everything else I told you about in the beginning of the video, but now you have ChatGPT built into it too. So it's going to become a whole lot more useful. And you could use the power of ChatGPT to actually write inside of different apps in your Mac. So you could use the Pages app, for example, which is similar to like a Word document. And inside of Pages, it has the Compose option that then uses the power of ChatGPT to help you write content. Now, as far as availability, everything is free. So they never mention any kind of paid subscriptions to get access to Apple intelligence, this ChatGPT integration, everything was free but they're gonna start rolling this out in the summer with some options, but mostly for developers. And in the fall, when iOS 18 comes out, a lot of these tools that I covered here are also gonna roll out with iOS 18. Now, if you have a Mac device, is now the best time to really learn ChatGPT, how to prompt it correctly, how to take the most advantage of it. So we do have an entire e-learning platform dedicated to teaching AI, and we have multiple ChatGPT courses beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses about prompting ChatGPT, training ChatGPT to write like you, all kinds of different tools related to learning how to properly use these AI tools. And you get access to all our courses for one low subscription price. And you could start with a free trial. So I'll link that below if you wanna learn more about that. As I get access to some of these tools, I'll be testing them out. So make sure you subscribe for that and I'll see you on the next video.